the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, look, I'm glad you're back. And and look, we are really tapping in on something when we're talking about the anatomy of things. And and I want to just keep on picking up because I'm telling you something, if we can get this nailed down, I'm just telling you, uh, now we can, all we want to do is arm ourselves with the tools God has given us in order to take on life. And I'm talking about taking on the things of the world, living in this world. And when I, you know, I, matter of fact, I like to rephrase it, take on life, use life to take on this world, huh? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to come to worship, praise your holy name. You said with two or three, gather in your name, you've been the midst of them. We now invite you to the present Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us as we get into your word, Lord. Make it plain, hallelujah, because we're all about understanding how to use the words, the tools you've given us to be successful. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hey, look, we want to make it plain. God wants us to make, God wants to make it plain so that we can be victorious Christians. And like I said, the vision of the ministry is to be able to, to apply the word of God distinctly uh, in, uh, to our everyday lives in a practical and effective manner. I mean, the whole key to it is we want to be effective. Every last one of us want to be effective as we get, walk day to day, being effective using the word of God so we can be successful. Amen? And like I said, it's a mind game. So we got to make sure that in our mind, because you're going to win or lose in your mind. I'm going to win or lose in my mind. Because you, if you want to be successful and taking on the challenges, and I, I use the analogy of playing in either basketball, football, any other sport, you got to go. You have to ha keep your head in the game in order for you to be successful and taking on the opposition. And we don't know that if you don't believe that there's an opposition in your life, and I think that's probably why we even created sports, so that we can learn the values that's needed to even be successful in a game, right? We, we practice, we condition, we, 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 we go over plays over and over again. We, we, we scrimmage against each other, right? And, and, you know, successful teams is when each person on that team gives that 100% even in practice. If, you, if, you, if you're the second team, you, you, you're saying, look, <laughs> I'm the first team in this scrimmage against you because if I don't give my best in defending you and, 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 and my best in trying to beat you, then when you play against somebody that's supposed to be the first team, they're not going to play with you. They're going to be sharp and they're going to be expecting to win. And that's the same thing in life. As you go through life, you're going to go through opposition. Some of those opposition is going to be, and, 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 uh, what I consider it normal oppositions in life, being competitive. You say we think about being competitive in sport, there's competitive in businesses. Uh, one business trying to be just as competitive against the other one. They're not sitting there trying to sit there and say, uh, we want you to have all the customers. No, they want to do everything to bring the customers to them. And if that means to, to be better service, better food, whatever, they want to do that so they can be successful, right? That's in the food industry. Uh, we're talking about different companies, talking about construction companies. I'm talking about most businesses are out there to, to provide a service so that they can be successful, right? Well, that means that there's a competitiveness. People looking for a job, applying for a job, they compete against you. So you, you, you have life is full of oppositions. So we have to be able to say, Lord, let me get my head right. 
get my head right so I can be successful, right? God, what you want God, if you're telling God to, to do something over somebody else, what you always want to do is say, God, help me be the best that I can. Same thing as for most teams have been saying, we play the way we practice. And if we practice the, and successfully and we, we execute our plays the right way, we're going to win. Well, that's the same thing in life. Every day you get up. Every day you have a competition. When you do get a job, you want to be successful in that job. You want to be successful in the position that you have and always thriving for a higher position. If you have a company, you always want to strive to be better rated, get a better, higher uh, volume of services. It's all about life. That's life is part of that. You know, you, you want to get, when you go for get degrees and you go for, you get your degree, you, 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 you're equipping yourself to be successful. And God is saying is, look, that's how I want to make you understand I created you with gifts. So and use those gifts so you can be successful. But understand, you have to understand that there is competition, competition and oppositions and part of the life struggles, right? Sickness is part of the things in life that comes up against us. And we, we you want to have your mind set set as a winner, right? You're a child of God. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That's something God wants us, to, for, for believers, listen to what the word says about who we are. You know, we, we, we are uh, child, children of God. We are uh, more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We are what God says we are. You want to be able to accept that and not accept what other people say you are. Don't let other people mold you because they are not your creator. If nothing else, even for a non-believer, you want to be able to understand this. I am not what other people say I am if, if it's negative or goes against the vision that I have my, in my life, in my mind of who I am. There's plenty of people that want to sit there and mold you and, 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 and try to define you. And you got to always remember, no, no, no. The world will not define you. People will not define you. People in relationship will not define you. You must define yourself. And then as a believer, you need to understand that God has already defined you as a child of God, being successful, having the power and the anointing of God, and the equipping of the saints to do the work of the ministry and being successful. Christ came to give life and life more abundantly. It is the devil that comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Christ said, I came to give life and life more abundantly. And I want us to start thinking we are successful live an abundant life and we want to live by faith and when i talked about it before you want to live with expectation of winning it got to be in your mindset you wake up in the day and you say i am a winner huh i am a winner what do you are well i'm telling you said if even for me don't, me don't believe i'm telling believe in god i'm telling you god created you to be a winner he didn't want you, he didn't create you to be depressed. He didn't create you to be defeated. He created you to win. And when you walk by faith, not by sight, what that means is I am not letting my environment determine who I am. I am going to win. I am going to overcome the obstacles because I'm already a winner. And I'm going to stay a winner. And as a believer, you're saying is that God created me to win. So we, we talk, so that's what that vision is all about, being effective, applying that word of God in our lives in a practical and effective manner because we're more than conquerors, amen? And one of the things is, like I told you about the desire, that the desire is a vision. That desire is an image of who and how you see yourself. And that's why you always want to be able to look at the images Look what's going on in your mind and sitting there saying is no, 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 no. If this does not line up to who I believe I am, 
then I got to, I, I got to reshape, refocus, and put my get my head back in the game of winning. And we we stopped off last time. We dealt with Genesis chapter six, chapter three. We talk about the fact is how just like the scripture said, if you look at these things as a parable, uh, a comparison in life that you all live. You know, we talk about Genesis 3, 1. We said, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. In life, things come at you sometimes directly. In a lot of cases, it comes at you subtly. That's, that's your life, my life. There's some approaches of how the enemy comes in to position itself to, to put you in a losing position, trying to get you off focus on who you are. Amen. You, none of us were created to be defeated. None of us were created to be a loser, as some people try to do it. And you know, people do that. They, they love some people love to come up with names on you, you know? And, and try to make you a joke instead of sitting there saying, "I, uh, you, you, you can, you be the joke because I ain't got time for you. I am not a joke, and I'm not gonna let you make me a joke." Amen. So look at the enemy; they come in subtle, and 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 I like the fact is that then you see right here how the enemy try to get you focused on the wrong direction. Look what it says here, and it was more so than the beast of the field with the Lord God had made, and said unto the woman, "Yea." Has God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? You know, why are you asking me that question? What's the point? You got to remember when people come in your life, watch and listen to what they say to you, because a lot of cases they're trying to position themselves or position you and get you off focus. And you got to make sure, check the questions, check anybody that comes in, check those different sources that come to your life, so you can guard yourself against opposition. Uh, look at this then. And then it says, uh, and the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruits of the trees of the garden. Verse three, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall, shall not eat of it. Which God said, right? Neither shall you touch it. She, he didn't say that, but she had that in there. I guess if you don't touch it, you won't eat it. <laughs> Hallelujah. But she didn't need to say that. And, and, and But if she did put the part of it, if you do eat it, you will die. In other words, if you do this, if you go against the instructions given, and I'm talking about the fact that even us, as we talk about bringing up to the modern day time, there are things that people tell you. You know, people that get involved with crack, I mean, it's like, come on, there's, there's, there's enough information that tells you what happens if you deal with crack. There's enough information to tell you what happened if you drink and drive. There's enough information out there to tell you that you can't be texting while you're driving. You, there's enough information out there that you don't play with people that have bad intentions. You, it, it tells you that uh, if you get involved with premarital sex, you, it tells you that you there, there are some consequences that comes along with it. I'm not trying to tell you that if you did it, you did it. But I'm trying to say there's consequences regardless. There's a consequence of possibly getting pregnant. There's a consequence of possibly that you can get sexual transmitted disease. Now it's like, what, 30, 40 of them now. You, you have a potential of getting involved with that. There's a potential that can happen if you commit adultery, if you're married. There's a potential of a lot of things that we all have instructions on. And you know, here's how the enemy comes in when they try to get you off track. And, and, and the serpent, verse four, the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. And that's what we get, that's what happens to every last one of us in life when they talk about the opposition that comes into our life. There's people that are gonna sit there and tell you that, that no, you go, let's do that. It ain't, you can get, it ain't gonna hurt you. And you know, it's like, wait a minute. How can you tell me it's not gonna hurt me when historically it has hurt others? If you do this, there's people that sit there and get people involved with crime. So they say, oh man, you, you, you can, you, we ain't gonna get in trouble. All you gotta do is this. Where people in the past have done that and got in trouble. There's people who have been set up because they did something that was illegal, immoral, and then cost came up. 
I tell you before, I said, uh, that little statement Jesse DePrante said, sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and then it's going to charge you more than what you want to pay. And that's normally what happens. 